Marcus Harton headed Linklater's Germany, teaches law firm leadership, and more recently founded the boutique firm specializing in labor law. He is as practical as he is conceptual in thinking about the business and profession of law. Harting sees the pandemic as an accelerator of transition from an analog to a digital society and the profound impact this will have on every aspect of our lives, not the least of, of course, the business and profession of law. This future, according to Hartung, is far more profound than having video conferencing in courtrooms. Welcome to Law Firm Weekly. It's really great to have you here. Marcus Hartung is the managing partner at Chevalier, a firm specializing in labor law with focus on employees. He's also a senior fellow and founder at the Butzerius Center on the legal profession, where he promotes the interfaces between law and business, management and leadership, as well as innovation and technology-driven legal solutions. He was also the managing partner at Linklaters in Germany. Marcus, welcome to the studio. Hi, thanks for having me. So last time we talked, Berlin, where you're based, is steaming hot, and today it is steaming hot as well. How do you? And there's no air conditioning in the building where you're in, right? It's, it's, uh, it's considered to be a historical building, so it's not that easy to get it installed. How do you? How do you deal with so much heat? Um, with well, with sort of patience, and um, we are not. Uh, air, air conditioning is not a common feature in German buildings. It has never been. So if we go to the United States and see all the skyscrapers with air conditioning, this is not familiar to us. So um, and uh, if we if we work in these old houses, which are under document protection, uh, sorry, under, under monument protection, uh, we have accepted that it's hot and we use something like this and or other fans to make it better for us. But no big deal. Yeah, we are generally speaking quite spoiled here in North America. There is air conditioning just about everywhere, sometimes a little too much. But let's uh, talk a little bit about uh, the two organizations, a company or firm, Chevalier uh, and Butzeria Center. Maybe you can talk a little bit about the background for each and what you do. Okay, um, the, the Butzeria Center is a a sort of think tank, which is part of Butzerius Law School. And Butzerius Law School in Hamburg is the only privately funded law school in Germany. All other German law schools at, university, uh, at universities are publicly funded. Um, and uh, more than 10 years ago, Butzerius Law School, which, which has always been and still is very innovative, thought about what might the future of legal markets be, not as a pure academic interest, but for the question, how do we have to, to train our students? So we are training or educating people today for a market in about eight years, and we have no idea how this market looks like. So, um, and I, um, together with Friedrich Blase, who was here the other day, we uh, designed um, management classes for Butzerius and that went down very well and it was great success and then this center was founded and the the aim was to to do research in legal market and bring transparency in that was what was at that time I mean more than 10 years ago not transparent pretty opaque um, and we wanted to be the first point of contact for people who wanted to understand the dynamics of the legal market, say the digital transformation, uh, how the legal market works, how law firms grow, what the economics behind legal services and um, the practice of law are, all these things. That was one part of what I did when I left Linklaters. And Chevalier is completely different. It's a legal tech law firm. And what we do is we try to, to bring to life everything what I have ever, say, researched and spoken about and, and advised, you know, to have a very focused and strategically aligned law firm doing all the right things, of course, and be successful in a very competitive market. 
I know that technology and law is obviously a passion of yours and an area where you believe the legal profession may experience a profound impact and change. I think that AI is obviously one aspect of it. Um, can you tell us why you believe technology will continue to change the legal profession? The growing capabilities of software and and the um, and 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 the loads of data which are available today, there there is a software in place which can do things which were not conceivable a couple of years ago, and this software is able to do things which uh, still today, but but in the old days only lawyers did. Um, and it's it's partly replacing certain um, uh, things lawyers do, and and that is to, to to start with whether it's you know whether it's reviewing documents whether it's automating workflows or these things. Um, this is of course slightly irritating lawyers because they have not yet learned how to how to deal with this software. It's tempting for clients who see that legal services can change and gain quality and are sort of more affordable than they than they used to be so it's a it's a broad area of issues and topics to be dealt with when it comes to technology and the law so it sounds to me <clears throat> that um, the resistance uh, comes from a number of areas. One is that many people are simply not comfortable with technology. The other aspect could be a threat, a uh, sense that, you know, technology can take over. Um, it, it, will it be too much of a guess for me to say this, that if lawyers were to actually take it on, adopt it, and understand how and where it can be used, um, this will enhance the profession uh, and will make lawyers how should I put it, more productive uh, and law firms even more successful than they are. In other words, it doesn't have to undercut what it is that lawyers do in their profession if they take it on. Yeah, they, um, I, I mean, you're right. The, the, the point to start with is that we all, whether we are experts or think we are experts or not, we sort of um, underestimate or overestimate that what's technology can do. So we, 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 we tend to overestimate the capabilities of law firm of sorry of, of technologies today and think that technology could do everything, in particular artificial intelligence. Whereas we tend to underestimate the impact which uh, technology can have in the future. That is that is number one. So if you discuss with people who are by nature laymen when it comes to technology, you have all these drama discussions of people who are just concerned or scared. And then everyone can participate in this discussion because it, it takes place in the internet and everyone with an access to the internet can participate in this debate, which makes it quite noisy and not always that structured. Point one. Point two is if we would educate students, law students, about that what technology can do and what the real task of lawyers is and what technology cannot do, then people would have a more, say, normal relationship to technology and they would use it as the black letter law to and then to to compose and set together product, uh, products um, to give better advice to their clients. So it's very much a question of training, educate, uh, educating, and really getting the real view on that, what software can do and what software cannot do. And there is a lot which software cannot do. Let me uh, switch gears uh, and kind of talk about the um, other aspect here, which is the pandemic that we're, you know, period that we're in and to what degree how law firms responded from what you've seen including your own mm. um is instituting either a change an acceleration of trends uh you know that happened before uh, or maybe a radical change altogether what's your take on it um i mean so much has been said about things which now happen at a 
faster pace than 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 we we had all assumed before. Things like working from home or remote working, and making use of technology. Uh, so where where courts realize that you don't have to have hearings which are face to face, can make use um, of technology and video. So this is, I, I think, very much using technology to replace our old fashioned or traditional ways of working. Um, you know, to have a court hearing supported via video is not so different from a court hearing where all people are in one room. I think what is more clearly showing how two centuries are clashing and the pandemic shows very drastically how the old analog century is fighting with the new digital world and that we all realize that making use of technology fundamentally changes the way we interact with each other and we are not trained to interact in that way i mean you see how people communicate in facebook or twitter and the issues which arise from that and how in a more civilized way people communicate when they are sitting face to face so we are all entering a new century forced by the pandemic if we had the choice for our pace to go to this new century, it would have taken some more decades to enter the new era of digitalization. And Corona is pushing us and accepting that this new world has some fundamental changes where we all have to adopt our, our manners and that what we think, how we should interact. Don't ask me for solutions. I, I just, I, I'm just calling out for think better. Um, don't just think it would be bringing video into courtrooms. That's a nice thing and it's important to get. And it's important to have law firms who look at their processes and how people work together. But understanding that a court is not necessarily a building, but a service. And a team doesn't necessarily need a room to effectively work in, that, that teams can work if they are spread all over the world, other than have this chit chat in the evening uh, after work, uh, drinks and things like that. We haven't found a way yet to replace that electronically. But to work effectively with, uh, with each other doesn't require to sit in one room, an office space, and it opens up completely new ways of how, how do our cities look like and how how do we interact how do we move how do and all these things um and that is you know asking how do law firms cope with the challenges i would say not better or worse than other companies or other say politicians or people who should take decisions for us to help to make the world a better place so we are all in a new situation and have no templates and boilerplates which we could use to to say well it's written here we have to turn right now it's 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 new and that is obviously when you don't have obvious go-to solutions and best practices can be a catalyst for change and innovation so in that respect this is actually the silver lining of what's happening around us there was another area that i'd like to get into but in a future conversation because i think it will kind of demand its own interview but you really challenged me when we were talking last about the difference between what you call digitization and digitalization. And I'd like to talk about it in one of our future conversations because I think it opens the door to a better understanding of the depth of using technology as opposed to the superficial aspects of it. In the meantime, I really want to thank you, Marcus, for taking the time to meet with you today and power through the sweltering heat of Berlin while being interviewed. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was a real pleasure. Hope to see you soon and live.